In this last video for chapter 2, we will be talking about three key concepts, the consumer's demand, the concept of elasticity, as well as incoming kind. So let us begin with demand. What is the demand curve? The demand curve is simply a, a curve which shows the relationship between the price of X and the quantity demanded for good X. And typically, the relationship between these two factors is usually inverse. What this means is that if the price of X were to increase, the quantity demanded for good X will decrease. And this is what we call the law of demand. So if you were to plot the demand curve on a price to quantity graph, what you'll see is a downward demand curve. And this reflects the inverse relationship between price and quantity. From here, we are going to learn how to derive the demand curve using two methods. So the first method will be the mathematical method. And this is simply the demand curve expressed in a form of an algebraic equation, which is simply the price of x, which is a function of the quantity demanded, is equal to a minus b times x. The reason why the parameter in front of variable x is negative is because we want to show the inverse relationship between the price of x and the quantity demanded of x. And the parameter a is simply the maximum amount that these consumers are willing to pay for a unit of good x. That was pretty straightforward, wasn't it? I don't think it's that difficult to draw a straight line given a demand function. Well, the next method, unfortunately, is not as simple as uh, the previous method. We're going to learn how to use graphs to draw the demand curve. And specifically, we are going to need the budget constraint as well as the indifference curves. And you will need to go back to your three best friends, the normal, inferior, as well as the given good. So to derive the demand curve using graphs, you are going to need two sets of graphs. You're going to need one regular graph with x on the horizontal axis and y on the vertical axis. And just below it, you're going to need another graph with x on the horizontal axis. And for the vertical axis, you are going to label it the price of x. For the graph on top, I'm just going to establish my initial equilibrium, just like how I usually do. But this time, I'm going to extend point A all the way to the bottom graph. So I'm going to label that as x0, and I know that initially the price of x is p0. So the corresponding price and quantity will give me point A on the graph below. So I'm not going to assume that the price of x is going to fall to px1. And when the price of x falls, we know that the budget constraint is going to rotate outwards. And the next thing we have to do is to establish point C, given the Hicksian definition of real income, which is somewhere over there. And since the new budget constraint is on top of the imaginary budget constraint, I know that this individual's real income has increased. So therefore, if I move to the right side of point C, x is a normal good, and I move to the left side, x is an inferior good. And I know that beyond point A, x is a given good because the income effect will be larger than the substitution effect. And let's just say that good x is a normal good, so I've got point B. I'm going to extend this all the way down to the second graph. So I'm going to label this as x1 normal good. And given x1 normal good and px1, I've got point B. So I'm going to assume linearity here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect points A and point B so that I have a demand curve showing that x is a normal good. So this is how you typically derive a demand curve. The reason why I say assume linearity because in real life, your demand curve is never a straight line. Sometimes it might be a curve. So I've got another point. I've got point B if let's say x is an inferior good. So same thing, I'm going to connect points A and B, and I've got a demand curve for an inferior good. And lastly, if x were to be a given good, what I have is point B over here, and I'm just going to call this x1gg, and another x1gg. So I've got another point right here, and I can just connect points A and the new point B. So I've got an upward sloping demand curve, um, which shows that good x is a given good. So this is how I've derived three different demand curves uh, given that good x might be an inferior, normal, or given good. And we see that the demand curve for a given good is upward sloping. Is it always the case? Well, we'll find out later. Now that we've got the demand curves settled, what we need to learn next is how do we identify expenditure on good x on the demand curve? So let's say we have a demand curve and initially the price of x is p0 which gives us a quantity demanded of x0. How do we identify what is the total expenditure on good x? Well, it's very simple. Total expenditure is simply the price of x multiplied by the quantity of x, right? 
what that means is that if you were to calculate the area of this green triangle over here, you should get the total expenditure on good X. So what happens if the price of X falls? Well, obviously the expenditure is going to change. So if the price of X falls to P1, then the quantity demanded for good X will increase to X1. So now the expenditure is this red box over here. So if you're going to take the price of x1 multiplied by x1, you're going to get total expenditures. Therefore, the area of this box is the expenditure. Now, has expenditure increased or decreased due to the decrease in price? Well, we got to find out. Thanks for watching a sample of the Quickonomics online learning experience. We hope you've enjoyed it. We believe that true happiness lies in realizing ambitions and dreams. That's why we make our products specific to your needs. Simple to understand and captivating, so that you can learn effectively while saving time, realizing those ambitions and dreams. The Quickonomics online learning experience is a range of supplementary lectures, tutorials, and exam solutions in the form of videos, which you can conveniently view anytime, anywhere. Watching our videos before and after your regular lessons at school, we aim to give you joy in learning and build academic confidence at the comfort of your own relaxed learning environment. So how can you begin? We welcome you to purchase Quickie Dollars to redeem the videos for full access to the Quickonomics online learning experience. Thank you for starting with Quickonomics.